Jay-Z just revealed how Diddy abused celebrities during freak-offs. Charlemagne recently mentioned that attendees of Diddy's parties could potentially face jail time. This news is likely making Jay-Z anxious, as it's known that he and Diddy had a strong connection, and Jay-Z attended some of those gatherings. Let me give you an example of what I'm referring to. Jay-Z and Diddy's relationship. Recently, almost every celebrity you can think of has been linked to Diddy, but some are struggling to keep their connections under wraps. Jay-Z, for instance, has faced some troubling accusations, and ever since Diddy's arrest, a particular photo has surfaced showing the two of them in an intimate setting. Rumors have circulated for years about Diddy's wild parties with other famous figures, and seeing him in bed with Jay-Z and other celebrities makes it hard to believe any denials. The infamous image even includes Jennifer Lopez and Aaliyah. If you're wondering about the time and place, this photo was taken at one of Diddy's famous parties in the Hamptons in 2000. The picture was posted on X on Friday, September 20th, and has since sparked a whirlwind of rumors, investigations, and debates about Diddy's relationship with Jay-Z and who else might have been involved. The party took place over two decades ago, and Diddy, wearing a red polo and white pants, is seen near the center. To his left is his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez in a light blue outfit, and on his right is the late Aaliyah dressed in all white. Within just a few days, the post was shared thousands of times and had accumulated over 100,000 likes. People on X have been quick to share their thoughts on the matter, with one user commenting, it looks like Diddy and Jeffrey Epstein ran the same kind of operation, and another adding, Aaliyah doesn't even seem happy in the photo, rest her soul. The leaked photo has since been confirmed to have been taken at a July 4th party in East New York's Hamptons, and other notable names, such as music executive Damon Dash, were also in attendance. Diddy and Jay-Z, both iconic figures in hip-hop, rose to prominence in the 90s, and though Jay-Z has tried to keep his friendship with Diddy under the radar, certain details couldn't be hidden. Both avoided jail in 1999 for separate, yet similarly charged incidents, and since achieving stardom, they've shared ventures in philanthropy, business, and luxury brands. They've also appeared at charity events and performed together on numerous occasions, such as at Scream Fest in 2007 alongside Kanye West and 50 Cent. It's somewhat ironic that 50 Cent was there, considering his harsh words about Diddy and his relationship with Jay-Z. 50 Cent, always known for his bold demeanor, has criticized their bond, especially given the photo of Diddy allegedly slapping Jay-Z, something that may have happened more than once, especially considering they were reportedly sleeping together seven years before. While it's understandable that 50 Cent would distance himself from the pair after such rumors, it's clear people are starting to question how close Jay-Z and Diddy truly are. Jay-Z has yet to make a public statement regarding Diddy's arrest or the allegations surrounding him, but 50 Cent hasn't held back. He recently posted a photo of Jay-Z on a milk carton with a caption implying that Jay-Z has been avoiding Diddy's calls. 50 has been enjoying Diddy's downfall, often trolling him since his legal troubles began, and when police raided Diddy's home in March, 50 Cent posted, it's not Diddy do it. It's Diddy Dunn, implying that the scale of the raid indicated a serious case against him. Despite the growing suspicions around Jay-Z and Diddy's relationship, there's been a lot of online debate. Many see Jay-Z as one of hip-hop's greatest and find it difficult to accept that he may have had some involvement with Diddy beyond business. On Reddit, some users defend Jay-Z, with one saying, just because Jay-Z worked with Diddy doesn't mean he's involved in the same stuff, while another claims that Jay-Z and Diddy aren't even close friends, just respected peers in the industry. However, those who have seen the slapping video or the infamous photo of them in bed together are finding it harder to dismiss the possibility of a closer relationship. As Diddy's scandal continues to unfold, other major celebrities are being drawn into the controversy as well. Diddy's other celebrity friends. While Jay-Z is undoubtedly one of the most prominent figures in rap, Diddy's social circle extends far beyond that, encompassing various sectors of the entertainment industry. He spent years ingratiating himself with influential individuals, from royalty to actors and fashion icons, becoming well acquainted with them all. Allegations suggest that Diddy leveraged his connections to shield himself from legal troubles, using his high-profile friends as a protective barrier. He infiltrated nearly every industry, including fashion, where he successfully collaborated with major names like Marc Jacobs, Anna Wintour, and Tommy Hilfiger, 
even enlisting them to contribute to one of his albums. There hasn't been another rapper with as extensive a network as Diddy, yet many of his high-profile acquaintances either remain silent or deny any involvement with him amid the serious accusations he faces, including sex trafficking and drugging individuals. It raises eyebrows that none have come forward, especially considering they have been seen at his parties without any obvious means of concealment. Notably, a witness named Dawn Richards has alleged that she saw Diddy assault his ex-girlfriend, Cassie, in the presence of Usher, Nao, and Jimmy Iovine, the founder of Interscope Records, claiming that none intervened. Let's examine some of Diddy's prominent connections over the years and consider their possible implications. First up is Ashton Kutcher, who has been friends with Diddy since the early 2000s. Their bond was so strong that they even dubbed themselves the New Rat Pack. During a 2019 interview with Hot Ones alongside Jamie Foxx, Kutcher hinted at secrets regarding his friendship with Diddy, noting he might need to share more soon, as he's reportedly expecting a subpoena related to Diddy's alleged crimes. Another notable friend is Anna Winter, who has attended several of Diddy's parties and even sent him a coveted invitation to the Met Gala, highlighting the high regard in which she and the fashion community hold him. Many believe her support helped Diddy gain entry into the fashion world leading to numerous appearances in Vogue, including a memorable cover in 1999. These high-profile associations reportedly inflated Diddy's ego, with accusations that he once claimed, When you talk to me, imagine you're speaking to Karl Lagerfeld, the iconic German fashion designer who passed away in 2019. French Montana has recently attracted attention after appearing in a peculiar video with Diddy, where he seemed to share an intimate moment while Diddy, dressed in a white robe, sang him a rather unusual birthday song. Although this might have seemed harmless at the time, the context raises suspicions. French Montana was once signed to Diddy's label, Bad Boy Records, and although he stated they parted on good terms in April 2024, he is yet to comment on the ongoing allegations against Diddy. Given their close past, it's natural for people to speculate about the nature of their relationship especially when it's unusual to celebrate a birthday in such an intimate and suggestive manner. Diddy's social circle isn't limited to rappers and fashionistas. He also shares connections with some of America's top athletes, including LeBron James. However, LeBron has attempted to distance himself from Diddy by unfollowing him on Instagram. Despite this, he has publicly praised Diddy's parties and has been seen celebrating with him multiple times. Their families have also been linked with rumors suggesting that LeBron's son is dating Diddy's daughter. LeBron has made statements like, everybody knows there's no party like a Diddy party, making it difficult for him to simply unfollow Diddy without raising eyebrows. Additionally, there are ongoing speculations about the nature of their relationship, particularly regarding a photo that some believe resembles LeBron James. Diddy's infamous parties have been a topic of intrigue for years, with Leonardo DiCaprio also among the attendees. Although rumors about the nature of these gatherings circulated in the past, they were largely ignored. However, with recent revelations, many are revisiting the history of Diddy's parties and questioning what truly went on behind the scenes. Diddy's parties and what goes on Diddy has been hosting extravagant parties since he rose to fame, but they gained notoriety not solely due to rumors of orgies or criminal activities. Instead, it was the celebrity attendees, particularly at his renowned white parties, that drew attention. In one video, he's seen with a champagne glass, embodying a commanding presence that was almost dictatorial. These gatherings in the Hamptons began in the early 2000s and created quite a stir, attracting a slew of famous names. His ex-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez was a frequent guest, and photos often depicted them together amidst a backdrop of champagne, alcohol, and scantily clad women. However, rumors suggest that the behind-the-scenes atmosphere was even more intense. Any notable celebrity from the late 90s to early 2000s seemed to have attended, with Paris Hilton labeling them as iconic after her presence at the inaugural party in 1998. Other attendees included big names like Jay-Z, Leonardo DiCaprio, and a young Kim Kardashian. While not every celebrity who attended is facing accusations, it's clear that the parties themselves were wild affairs, independent of any scandals. The media often showcase scenes of champagne being poured over half-naked bodies, painting Diddy as a real-life Gatsby. 
Though many remain tight-lipped about the true nature of these events, a former music industry insider named Tom Swoop has shared insights about surviving these parties. He explained that the gatherings were divided into tiers, with only select individuals gaining access to the most exclusive areas where the most outrageous activities allegedly took place. Tom described witnessing rituals performed by men and women who were promised rewards, such as record deals, for their participation. He also claimed that drugs like ecstasy were consumed off various surfaces, including people's bodies. According to him, outdoor beds were common, and rumors of wild sexual encounters circulated. In a 2006 interview on Oprah, Diddy explained that he envisioned the white parties as a way to strip away individual identities, allowing everyone to exist on the same level. He intended these gatherings to bridge the gap between hip-hop culture and elite society. Despite the serious allegations against him, it appears he succeeded in this vision. However, Tom Swoop contended that the events were more about Diddy's power dynamics than social integration. He recounted a disturbing incident where he saw Diddy jokingly suggest that a young artist perform a sexual act on his bodyguard in exchange for a lucrative record deal. Tom isn't the only one to speak out about Diddy's parties. An alleged drug dealer claimed to have supplied narcotics to the events and recounted witnessing high-profile celebrities engaging in sexual acts. This dealer recalled being greeted by Diddy in a white robe and taken to a back room for a cocaine transaction. Along the way, he was shocked to see unexpected couples, including rappers, engaging with one another, leading him to lose respect for some once he learned their identities. Much of the scrutiny surrounding Diddy since his arrest involves allegations linked to these wild gatherings. Although no direct evidence of freak-offs has surfaced at the white parties, the speculation persists. Diddy hosted his last white party in 2009, but the tradition continues with Michael Rubin, a billionaire and owner of Fanatics, now hosting similar events in the Hamptons. These parties occur on July 4th and draw a star-studded guest list, including both established and emerging rappers. Jay-Z is often present, as he has a penchant for celebrations, especially those featuring a white dress code. Leonardo DiCaprio, another regular at Diddy's white parties, was also spotted at last year's event hosted by Ruben. While Diddy's famous white parties may have ended in 2009, he has continued to host lavish gatherings, and one of his major lawsuits stems from a man named Rodney Jones, who claims to have lived with Diddy for a year and witnessed some very unusual happenings. How Diddy was caught? Rodney Jones, among others, filed lawsuits against Diddy around the same period, which ultimately contributed to his arrest. Diddy was taken into custody in New York after facing months of allegations and lawsuits. On September 16th, he was charged with racketeering and trafficking offenses. During a press conference following his arrest, prosecutors disclosed that their investigation had been underway since 2008, coinciding with the infamous parties he hosted in the Hamptons. A detention memo released indicated instances of Diddy misusing his power and harming women, including pressuring them into various activities. He has been denied bail twice and is currently held in a notoriously tough detention center in New York until his trial, now on suicide watch. Just last month, he enjoyed a lavish lifestyle in one of his mansions, but now he faces severe public scrutiny from behind bars. The allegations against him reportedly stretch back to the 1990s, and more individuals are beginning to come forward. The catalyst for this situation occurred in November 2023 when four women shared their stories, including his former girlfriend Cassie Ventura, who detailed years of alleged abuse and violence. She claimed Diddy assaulted her and coerced her into sexual encounters with other men. Cassie met Diddy when she was just 19, while he was 37, and soon after, she was signed to his record label, Bad Boy Records. In her lawsuit, she described various abuses, including being forced to use drugs and participate in sexual activities. Diddy settled the lawsuit within a day, and the settlement amount remains undisclosed. Around seven months later, a video surfaced that appeared to show Diddy assaulting Cassie and dragging her by her hair in a hotel. This footage went viral, prompting Diddy to release an apology video in which he admitted, I hit rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior in that video is inexcusable. Despite his apology, the damage was done, 
leading more individuals to share their experiences. Numerous allegations have surfaced from those who claim to have been abused or witnessed Diddy's misconduct. One noteworthy video from 2018 features a man claiming to be a former associate of Diddy discussing his relationship with Cassie. He references instances from Cassie's lawsuit where she mentions being forced into sexual situations. Although Diddy and his legal team have denied these allegations, the timing is suspicious, especially considering that this man disclosed information about drug use and implicated other rappers. Even before Cassie's lawsuit in November 2023, whispers of scandal had begun to circulate. Following her allegations, other women felt empowered to come forward, including Liza Gardner, who accused Diddy and R&B singer Aaron Hall of assaulting her in 1990. Joy Dickerson Neal also alleged that Diddy drugged and raped her at the age of 19. In 1999, Diddy assaulted a prominent record label executive, but managed to escape serious consequences by attending just one day of anger management classes after pleading guilty to lesser charges. Shortly thereafter, he was arrested for possessing a firearm in connection with a shooting incident involving himself and Jennifer Lopez at a club. A member of Diddy's entourage took responsibility for the incident and was sentenced to prison. Following Diddy's arrest, one alleged victim, Natania Rubin, stated that she was shot in the face and claimed to have witnessed Diddy pull the trigger. She expressed willingness to undergo surgery to remove the bullet fragment from her face as potential evidence against him. Additionally, a December 2023 lawsuit alleges that Diddy, along with former bad boy President Harvey Pierre, drugged and assaulted a 17-year-old girl in 2003. This was a few years before he began his alleged abuse of Cassie, which started in 2012. When Cassie attempted to leave Diddy, she briefly dated Kid Cudi, leading to threats from Diddy, who allegedly threatened to blow up Cudi's car. Notably, Cudi's car did explode in his driveway around that time. As allegations and lawsuits against Diddy continue to accumulate, a recent book titled Kim's Lost Words has emerged, which recounts the alleged memoirs of Kim Porter, Diddy's ex-partner who passed away from pneumonia in 2018. The diary purportedly details her observations of Diddy's numerous encounters, including relationships with an Oscar-winning actor and his wife, as well as an 18-year-old pop star who later gained significant fame. Diddy has played a pivotal role in many of the music industry's biggest success stories and has extensive connections throughout the field. His arrest has sent shockwaves through the industry, leaving many uncertain about its future. Are Jay-Z and Diddy part of the Illuminati? To grasp the possible connection between Epstein, Jay-Z, and Diddy, we must delve into the secret society that has been the subject of whispered speculation for centuries. The Illuminati in the mid-1990s, a series of collaborations within the rap community began to pave the way for references to the Illuminati in hip-hop. It all started with a remix of LL Cool J's I Shot Ya, which featured Keith Murray, Tupac, and a young Foxy Brown. However, it was Prodigy of Mob Deep who delivered the now-famous line that forever altered the landscape of hip-hop. Illuminati while my mind, soul, and my body. Prodigy's reference was the first significant mention of the secret society in a rap song, igniting a wave of intrigue and speculation regarding the Illuminati's presence in the genre. This marked the beginning of a new mindset within hip-hop, one that was as insightful as it was filled with suspicion. Around the same period, other artists began to allude to the Illuminati in their lyrics. For instance, CeeLo Green's song, Cell Therapy, included a warning about the New World Order, suggesting that time was running out and that preparation was crucial to avoid disaster. Such lyrics intensified the fascination with the Illuminati conspiracy theory in hip-hop. As time progressed, references to the Illuminati within rap music continued to rise. Jay-Z, one of the genre's most successful and influential artists, even sampled Prodigy's line from I Shot Ya in his track Devils from his debut album Reasonable Doubt. This fueled persistent rumors linking Jays to the Illuminati, with some suggesting that his accomplishments in the music industry stemmed from his association with the secret society. The Wu-Tang Clan, known for their lyrical depth and enigmatic image, also contributed to the growing references to the Illuminati in hip-hop. Ugod, a member of the group, 
urge listeners to get your shit together before the F-I-N-G Illuminati hits in their song Impossible, further cementing the connection between the Illuminati and the rap scene. Although interest in the Illuminati within hip-hop waned for a time, it re-emerged in 2008 when Prodigy published an open letter in Urbanization magazine from prison, claiming that his former rival Jay-Z promotes a lifestyle aligned with the beast. This revival sparked renewed debate and brought the Illuminati theory back into focus. Today, the concept remains highly relevant in hip-hop culture. Artists like Jay-Z, Beyonce, Eminem, Lady Gaga, and Kanye West have been accused of being mere puppets in this enigmatic network of shadowy figures. The ongoing success of these musicians is frequently linked to their supposed ties to the Illuminati. The theory has even permeated popular culture, leading to a surge of books, podcasts, and blogs that analyze how the Illuminati supposedly uses media and entertainment to advance its agenda. Numerous YouTube videos, boasting millions of views, examine the symbolism and purported connections between various artists and the secret society. The Illuminati often becomes a focal point of discussion whenever celebrities like Whitney Houston or Prince die unexpectedly. To comprehend the alleged ties between the Illuminati and the music industry, we must first delve into the origins of the secret society itself. The Illuminati, also referred to as the Bavarian Illuminati or the Order of the Illuminati, was established in 1776 by a German professor named Adam Weishaupt. He aimed to recruit members from the Freemasons, a secret organization still active today, to spread Enlightenment ideas and challenge the authority of the Roman Catholic Church over philosophical and scientific discourse. Over the following decade, the Bavarian Illuminati expanded significantly, reportedly gathering around 2,500 members. However, the society disbanded by 1787, seemingly disappearing into obscurity. Despite this dissolution, rumors about the Illuminati's ongoing existence persisted into the 20th century. The renewed interest in the Illuminati theory can be traced back to a speech by President George H.W. Bush in 1991, where he referenced the establishment of a new world order at the conclusion of the Cold War. Secret Rituals Diddy got hit with a lawsuit. The lawsuit alleges that in 2003 Combs, along with two other individuals, gang raped a 17-year-old girl. The plaintiff, referred to as Jane Doe, alleges that she was flown from Michigan to Diddy's recording studio in New York via a private jet. According to the lawsuit, her experience there was horrifying. Jane Doe claims that she was given large amounts of drugs and alcohol, making her vulnerable and unable to protect herself. As she slipped in and out of consciousness, she found herself in a terrifying situation. The lawsuit details the traumatic events of the alleged assault, stating that Jane Doe was raped by Diddy over a bathroom sink while she was in a semi-conscious state. The breach of her body and trust was unimaginable, but the ordeal did not end there. The lawsuit shockingly asserts that Diddy watched as another man joined in the assault, causing further trauma to Jane Doe. The specifics are too graphic to detail here, but it is clear that this experience left a lasting impact on her life. Additionally, the lawsuit claims that the incident was part of a broader sex trafficking operation, with Jane Doe being flown to New York City solely to be exploited. The lawsuit claims that Diddy and his associates orchestrated this terrible act, targeting a vulnerable high school teenager. The emotional and psychological effects of such a traumatic incident are profound. Jane Doe has experienced significant emotional distress and feelings of shame that have lingered for two decades. The trauma from this horrific event has impacted her personal relationships and her ability to trust. It is important to emphasize that these are allegations made in a lawsuit, and the truth will ultimately be determined in court. Diddy has strongly denied these accusations and asserts his innocence. This is not the first time he has faced serious claims. Recently, another lawsuit was filed by Cassandra Ventura, also known as Cassie who accused Diddy of rape and physical abuse over a decade-long relationship. The accumulating allegations against him raised serious concerns regarding his behavior. According to the lawsuit, Ventura alleges that Diddy repeatedly raped her and subjected her to physical violence throughout their time together. The details of this alleged abuse are deeply unsettling, with Ventura claiming that Diddy maintained control over her through fear and intimidation. 
The lawsuit describes a pattern of violence in which Diddy allegedly assaulted Ventura both physically and sexually on numerous occasions. The emotional impact of such abuse is significant, as Ventura endured years of trauma and suffering in silence. Furthermore, the lawsuit claims that Diddy used his influence to isolate Ventura from her friends and family and manipulate her career. Ventura asserts that she lived in constant fear, uncertain of Diddy's next actions. His legal team has been working diligently to defend him against these claims, attempting to discredit the plaintiff's accusations. They argue that these lawsuits are merely attempts to damage Diddy's reputation and extort money from him. The impact of these allegations on Diddy's career has been considerable. Following the lawsuit, Diddy chose to step down as chairman of Revolt, the music-focused TV network he established in 2013. This decision was seen as a recognition of the serious nature of the allegations and a need for a thorough investigation. The allegations have also affected Diddy's brand partnerships and business endeavors, with several companies distancing themselves from him by suspending or terminating collaborations. The fallout from these allegations raises concerns about the long-term viability of Diddy's various ventures. It is beginning to resemble a narrative akin to that of a black Epstein, but stay tuned for more information on the darker aspects of elite society in the video on your screen.